Well, hello. I just wanted to talk about next steps, especially for those of you guys who are learning from home. And even for those of you guys who were in the classroom with me, you remember uh, one of the first things I did after getting my three source images and printing them out is I went ahead and traced over the big shapes. These would be things like, you know, the big shape of the maple key uh, uh, wings, I guess I'll call them. <laughs> and then the big shape of the outside of this part of the maple key. So those big shapes. And then inside of that, you'll notice I also traced over the smaller value areas as shapes. And I even traced over the lines. So that helps me because I can kind of look at this image in a more simplified way. I can kind of draw it into this more, I can draw it in this more simplified way too. And almost in the way that it would look like if it were a coloring book image before the coloring book, coloring is done, or perhaps a paint by number, if you know what that is, before we put any paint in it. So by doing this in my source image first that I printed out and that I printed out for all of you, tracing over those lines and shapes, and not only the big shapes of the outside, but also the smaller shapes of the highlights or value areas that are inside, and then yeah, the lines too, uh, that helps you to uh, simplify those objects so that when I draw them, as you can see I have done, on my big paper, I can draw them just that same way. Can you see how I redrew the maple key? Big shapes, and then also some of the smaller shapes. And like within here, you can see how the value areas are drawn as shapes too, right? Did the same with the bird, right? Big shape of the wing, obviously. And then within that, these smaller shapes, but not only the shapes of the feathers, but look, those are sort of like darker spots, right? So I wouldn't want to draw every single detail, just the key details, as you can see. And so I have in this next step, after having traced it over in my photo, redrew it on my big paper. And what that really helps you do too is also proportion wise. When I think about these things as shapes and not as like, you know, birds and maple keys, I can think about the proportion of the shapes in relation to each other and make sure then that my drawing is in proportion. So the body is the right size in relation to the wings, for example, or the tail is the right size in relation to the body and the head is not overly big. It's the right size in relation to the rest of the bird. If I were to just think about this as a bird and try and draw it that way, that might be harder to do. But when I think about it as shapes, I can find that I can use ratios to do that. And you also notice that I put like a, I was, I found, I didn't find the maple key to be really hard in terms of drawing it uh, ratio wise and proportion wise. I didn't find either of those two forms to be too hard to draw at all. The bird was tricky though. And my big issue I was having with the bird was the head just kept being too big. So to help me with proportion, and even when I'm looking at something, it's kind of like I'm looking at it with this idea of a line going down the middle both ways. You can see that to help me with proportion, I literally drew that line on my photo and then drew it again on my surface of my drawing paper. It's not a rule that you have to do that. It's more of a tip. And it helped me a lot because until I did that, I was drawing the head too big of the bird. In the next step, you're going to see me wanting to go over and trace over the lines of pencil of the two maple keys and the bird with color pencil. Um, the maple key has kind of a greenish yellow and a brown that's sort of a red violet brown actually. And the bird itself also has some yellowish colors in it as well as some kind of mm, soft red brownie uh, that are kind of a red violet brown. So for that reason, and cause I'm not going to be worried about having natural color, I'm going to have kind of like hyper color, uh, high saturated color for my image. I'm going to, in the next step, pick the different colors that the overall object is basically and trace over my pencil. The reason I do that is cause I know I'm going to be working in watercolor for at least part of this artwork. That's my choice. And Pencil, as you probably discovered in your watercolor unit, when you put watercolor on top of, it'll blur and smudge. By going over top of my lines in a color pencil color that's a light, not a dark, very light color, uh, and also light hand, not pressing hard, and going over those lines with color pencil, they're going to stay put where they, where they are. It also gives me a little bit of, an, of a contour line that I can work with when painting. I'm going to be doing watercolor paint all in the background everywhere, and then in the forms themselves, I'm going to be mixing watercolor for any, uh, mixing watercolor and color pencil 
I'll do watercolor for the really big areas because it's nice and easy to put the watercolor in those areas. And then for things that are smaller details or even I think for the shading part, I'm going to use color pencil on top of that. So anyhow, I'll take another video when I'm done my next step, which is, of course, like I was mentioning, going over my pencil with color pencil so it doesn't smudge. It also helps you to kind of plan out the colors that I'm going to be using a little bit better. Okay.